One of our viewers wrote, can you make a video on judging color values? Uh, this person says, everyone wants to explain values in terms of black and white, or the black and white scale. And she said, which I don't find helpful in the real world. So let's take a look at that. the scale the viewer is talking about. We're accustomed to seeing this, this kind of value scale where values are ranked uh, 1 to 10, light to dark. Or we've seen another version of that where, where values are ranked 10 to 1, light to dark, which can be very, very confusing. I have another way of thinking about value, and that is whether it's in shadow or not in shadow. And if you think about color, or if you approach color, as to whether it's in shadow or not in shadow, then it enables you to read the value of that color more clearly. It makes more sense. It makes a lot more sense to me uh, to look at values in terms of shadows and not in shadows rather than in terms of numbers. So let's take a, a little bit of an analytical look at what I'm talking about. Now I have here a photograph of a rose. A rose, a red rose. We normally think of red being a lighter color. Let's say, let's say that a different way. A red rose in a green environment. Now we usually think of a red as being a lighter color than green. But that's not true if the green is in light and the red is in shadow. And so you can see what I'm talking about here just with a little bit of an illustration. Well, you see how light the red is on this side. Now I'll give you just a little bit of uh, indication on the canvas here. Uh, you see the light, the red here is about this light. Now, when I put that light against this white canvas, you see it seems a little bit darker than the canvas. Uh, but then when I put that red in shadow, or I throw that red into the shadow color, if you look at the shadow here, this cast shadow, you also look at the shadow on the opposite side of the red, you see that is quite dark. And so this, would, this is more like a shadow color of the red on the opposite side. In fact, it is even darker than that, and so I'll just darken, even darken that red a little bit more. I, I darkened it by throwing a little green in it. Now that is still red, even though it's in the shadow side, it's still red, but it's red in shadow. Now what we know is that as things are, uh, when things are in shadow, they can be in deep shadow. So let's look at what deep shadow might look like in red which we see there in that cast shadow. So deep shadow might look like this, real, really dark. Uh, then we might have more moderate shadow that would look uh, maybe um, a little bit like that. Not quite, no, I've got that a little bit dark. Let me just rinse the brush and take that photograph down so I can have both hands to work with here. Uh, okay, let's, let's, look at the, let's look at moderate shadow. Moderate shadow might be something like that. It would be a little bit darker. And then uh, a shallow shadow. A shallow shadow. And as you can look back at the rose here, you see this falls into more shallow shadow where the rose turns away from the light source. Shallow shadow then would end up being a little bit lighter. Let's get that just a little bit lighter right there. So, um, not a real good shallow then if you think of the values of shadow the shadow side of red the values as being sh uh, shadow shallow moderate and deep that makes a lot more sense than if you say okay that's going to be values 8 9 and 10 if that's the value scale you're using or if you said 3 2 and 1 if you're using the other value scale which can be totally confusing this won't be confusing uh, now, as you're moving up the value scale with the color red, you'll reach that point where it's uh, neither in shadow nor in light. Well, it's, you might say uh, the place where it crosses from shadow into light on something that's um, something that's a round form like the res, we call or like the rose, we call that the terminator line, and that is the place where we read it as red. That's the place where it's called uh, the, the value of the color that it is. And so in this case, if we just we throw this red here, 
uh, this is a natural red straight out of the tube, like right there, that then indicates the the color of the re of the of the rose itself. Then, as it moves towards light, it begins to get lighter, and so uh, as it and where it's being hit directly by light, it's going to be very 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 light. So you've got center light where it's very very light and light red and then you've got what we call half tones or mid tones that are would start with right where the center light is because a, a red would get a little bit lighter uh, or a little darker less light I should say and then as it moves towards that terminator it begins to pick up a little bit more uh, color more value so it would be like center light half tone one half tone tone two or half tone three before uh, when it reaches this point of just before it turns into shadow. So in that case we may say red is light. Red hit by light is going to be lighter than red that's in shadow. So you see it's all relative uh, and when you read it that way uh, whether it is in light or whether it's in shadow it makes a lot more sense. One more little point I want to make here. Let me rinse the brush out and that is the original point I brought up of red versus green. Now we usually we would think if I said to you which is darker red or green you might say green is darker. Well that's not a really good question because red versus green no matter what color will be determined by how much light is shining on the color or how much is in shadow or to what degree it's in shadow. And so you can see right here you see right here where this green is being hit very, very strongly by light, it's light green. It's more like, more like this, this color of green, or this value of green, I should say. This value of green right here, where it's being hit very, very strongly by light. As that moves into shadow, it will become darker, more like this. You see, this is darker green because it's moving more towards in shadow. This is the lighter green because it's moving more towards light. Now we're talking just about value here. We're not talking about reflected light and all those kinds of things. Just the value of color. So the best way to answer that question is, uh, you, there's, it, it's false to think that every color has its own value even though the colors do have an inherent value. Yellow is very, very light. Uh, blue is very, very dark. But there are then different kinds of blues the thing in uh, uh, different kinds of yellows that will look some a little darker some a little lighter. The better way to understand the value of color is to think of it as whether it's in shadow or not in shadow and to the degree that it's in shadow or the, to, to, to the degree that it's being hit by light. If you found this quick tip helpful uh, why not check out our full length videos. Many of you are doing that now and you seem to be having lots of fun with that. Um, go on, that's on dianeminds.com and if you'd like uh, me to do a quick tip for a question that you have leave a comment right down here let me know what's on your mind and there's your quick tip